Investors are in for a busy week of reporting as Q3 earnings season is in full swing. So joining me today is our head of equity research, Hamish Patel, to discuss. Great to see you. How are you? Great to be here. Great. Thank you. So let's talk about markets. What's moving them right now? While we've seen some softness in uh, markets over the last couple of days, as investors have become more cautious around geopolitics and the U.S. election, um, equity markets have generally actually been quite resilient through October. I mean, if we look at the S&P 500, uh, markets have actually grinded higher and last week hit all-time highs. Um, This strength has actually been driven by a couple of factors. Firstly, um, we've seen strong earnings reports from a lot of major companies, especially the U.S. banks. And furthermore, we've seen better than expected economic data, which has supported the market's optimism around a soft landing. In stark contrast, it's been a tough month for bonds Mm. as a resilient U.S. economy and moderating inflation has led to a repricing of interest rate expectations. We have seen the U.S. 10-year move around 60 basis points higher to around 4.2% as the market expects the magnitude of rate cuts to be materially lower than previously expected. So let's talk about earnings. What can you share with us? What have we seen? Yeah, sure. So we're around a third of the way through the US earnings season. And so far, we've seen around 64% of companies surprised positively on sales and around 79% on earnings, which is above historic averages. However, expectations have been materially reset in recent months, Mm. so this is not really that surprising. The average earnings beat so far has been around 6%. This is marginally below the 10-year average of around 7%. If we look at S&P 500 earnings, earnings have remained resilient year-to-date in aggregate, but there has been a divergence between MAG7 stocks and the rest of the S&P 500. So that actually has been a common theme, right? We've seen the Magnificent Seven do extremely well recently, and then the rest of them have kind of lagged behind. And that's uh, that's true. So what we have seen since the 30th of June is actually the 7% return that we've seen on the S&P 500 has been predominantly been driven from the non-Magnificent Seven stocks. Good. And, and, and as we look forward, what's interesting is the market is actually looking for those companies to deliver double digit earnings growth as we go forward. A key surprise this quarter has been the financial sector, where we saw many of the large cap banks, the likes of JP Morgan and Goldman Sachs, surprise materially on earnings. Higher interest rates have boosted net interest margins for many of the banks, while heightened volatility benefited many companies' trading divisions. Mm. In Europe, we're around a quarter of the way through earnings season. So far, it's actually been very, very mixed. 39% of companies are beaten on sales, while 50% of companies on earnings, well below historical averages. Expectations are fairly low, as we've seen several high-profile profit warnings recently from the likes of Stellantis and ASML. Next week is a big week for earnings. We've got a third of the S&P 500 and around 30% of the stock 600 reporting. While earnings expectations have been materially reset for Q3, expectations for Q4 and importantly 2025 are still fairly high. So in the US, we're looking for around 13% earnings growth next year. So any disappointments may weigh on markets, especially around big tech earnings, given recent concerns in relation to whether vast capex investments in AI will generate returns. Mm, AI is a big one I think that people are keeping an eye on, right? They are. More recently, we've seen some concern, you know, with regards to mega cap tech capex, uh, especially with regards to, you know, the the sort of returns these companies might generate and whether those returns will actually take longer to come through than originally thought. So what's the outlook for equity markets? What's in store? So as we look forward, we're optimistic on equity markets. We think from an economic perspective, the current backdrop should generally be a positive environment for equities. However, we do anticipate market volatility to continue, especially as investors have grown more cautious recently around various concerns, including lofty valuations, geopolitics, and the upcoming US election upcoming U.S. election, I feel like all eyes are on that. Sure. So we're around two weeks away, and it does look to be very closely contested. Um, 
I mean, I don't think we'd be surprised to see some volatility and yeah. to see markets underperform. Historically, where we have seen uh, elections, you know, that are quite close, markets do tend to actually sort of underperform going into those outcomes. Interesting. I mean, it's our view that whether we have a Trump or a Harris government, uh, you know, markets can outperform next year. But a couple of things we'll be watching are trade tariffs and rhetoric on fiscal stimulus. Also, any further escalation in the Middle East could lead to volatility and weigh on markets. We are yet to see how Israel might retaliate against Iran's missile strikes from earlier this month. As we enter a big week for earnings, we're watching a lot of our company's forward guidance very closely. As I mentioned, expectations are quite high, particularly in the US, and valuation is above average levels. So any disappointment here may actually lead to some weakness in markets. So to summarize, look, we're cautiously optimistic on equities. We expect US corporate earnings to continue to broaden out beyond technology. However, we expect volatility to persist, especially in related to sectors that are sensitive to interest rates. There we have it, our Q3 earnings season summary. Hamish, thank you so much for being here. That was fabulous stuff and we can't wait to see you next time. Thank you for having me.